So, last time we saw two important properties of uh, localization that if 0 to m 1 to m 2 to m 3 to 0 is exact, there is an exact sequence of A modules, then for any any multiplicative set S S inverse M one to S inverse M two to S inverse M three to 0 is exact. So, I will call this f, call this g and this is s inverse f, s inverse g. This is uh, one important property that we saw. Another property is uh, s inverse a tensor m as A modules is isomorphic to S inverse M. Okay. This isomorphism is as S inverse A modules. Okay. Uh, so, one immediate corollary is that if N is a sub module of M, Sorry? How we can make M to be S inverse A module? This is not S inverse A module, this the tensor product. See, in this, this tensor product, I can, uh, so this is in general true. Suppose I have a map F from A to B, this is a ring homomorphism, okay, and M is an A module and N is a B module. Okay. Then N is naturally an A module via F, right. So, I can take, uh, I can look at uh, sorry, this is a bi module. This is this is something that we discussed, right? This is a bi module that is by a b module. If this m is a by a b module, n is a b module, then m tensor n over a this is a B module. You can see, you can define scalar multiplication like this A m tensor n, this is m tensor A n, right. Because, ah, okay, this is a bi module. So, Ah, yeah, I, I can just take this to be an A module. Yeah, so this, uh, this, yeah, M tensor, M tensor N, this is a bi module then. What we get is the M tensor N is a bi module. It is an A module via taking the scalar product on the first component and it is a B module via taking the scalar product on the second component. So, that will also be bi module S Yes, this will be bi module. See, any S inverse A module is also an A module via this homomorphism A to S inverse A. Yeah, if N contained in M is a sub module is then 
S inverse m mod n, this is isomorphic to S inverse m mod S inverse n. How do you prove this? Given a module m and a submodule n, one can think of an exact sequence. What is the exact sequence? Zero to n to m to m mod n, right? So we have exact sequences. Zero to n to m mod n to sorry <laughs> n to m to m mod n to zero. This is the natural inclusion. This is the natural surjection. And here the kernel is n, which is the image. Therefore, this is an exact sequence. Okay. Similarly, I have an exact sequence S inverse n going to S inverse m going to S inverse m modulo S inverse n to 0. This is exact, this is exact implies that 0 to S inverse n to S inverse m to S inverse m mod n to 0 is exact. So, if this is uh, I call this i and this pi. So, S inverse i this will be S inverse pi. So, this is exact implies that S inverse of m mod n this is isomorphic to S inverse m modulo S inverse. I will just put one or two exercises that if n and p are submodules of, of m, then S inverse n plus p is equal to S inverse n plus S inverse p, S inverse n intersection p is equal to S inverse n intersection S inverse p. The first one is easy verification. For the second one, can you say that you know one set is contained in the other, which is contained in the other. So, I have this, uh, if I have two, m 1 is contained in m 2, then s inverse m 1 is contained in s inverse m 2, right. So, here n intersection p is contained in n, therefore, s inverse n intersection p is contained in this one, similarly it is. So, S inverse of n intersection p is contained in S inverse of n intersection S inverse of p. Now, suppose I take an element here, which is let me say n by s is in uh, n by s. So, this is yeah, n by s is in S inverse n equal to p by t which is in S inverse p let us say that what does that say? That says that so there exists u such that u in S such that u times n t is p S Okay. 
So, that says now look at n, n is in this is in n and p is in p right. So, u n t belongs to so this says that u n t belongs to that is by since it is in n it is certainly in n at the same time it is equal to p s u therefore, it is in p as well which means this is in n intersection p that means i divide so i that means u n t divided by s u t all of them are in s this is in but what is this this is yeah n by s this is in s inverse of n intersection So, therefore, what we have shown is that this n by s is in s inverse intersection uh, s inverse of n intersection. So, that proves s inverse n intersection p is equal to algebraically as well this localization is important in the sense that if you uh, certain properties if they are locally true then they are globally true in the sense that. So, let me just uh, uh, write, write down this definition. Let A be a ring a property P is said to be a local property if if the following holds. P is P holds true in A or in M if and only if P holds true. in A p or in M p for every prime ideal p. Okay. So, there are many properties which are local you uh, many times you can localize a ring and assume that the ring is local. So, let us look at I mean I will give you one example being 0 a modulus being 0 is a local property. What do I mean by that? Let me write it down. Let A be a ring and M be an A module. then the following are equivalent m is 0 m localized at p is 0 for every prime ideal p and third is even more stronger this is localized at every maximal ideal what we are saying is that 
in a ring if m you look at s inverse m if s inverse m is 0 for every maximal ideal a complement s being complement of maximal ideals then the module has to be 0 or in other words if this is non zero I can at least find one maximal ideal for which s inverse is non zero localization gives you a non zero module ok. So, this is uh, 1 implies 2 trivial 2 implies 3 trivial because every maximal ideal is prime. So, we need to prove 3 implies 1 ok. So, assume that m localized at m is 0 for every maximal ideal. Now, suppose m is non zero that means, there exists a non zero element x in m. So, since x is non zero annihilator of x cannot be equal to a right annihilator is equal to a if and only if x is 0 otherwise annihilator of x is equal to a means 1 times x is 0, but 1 times x is always x. So, if x is non 0 this cannot be equal to a which means annihilator is a proper ideal of a. Right. So, therefore, I can find a maximal ideal containing annihilator of x. Now, look at the localization of m with respect to this maximal ideal. In that module x the image of x is 0, because that module itself is 0 right. We are assuming that m localized at the maximal ideal is 0 for every maximal ideal. So, this says x by 1 is 0 in m localized at this particular maximal ideal. That means, there exists u in a without m such that u times x is 0. That means, u is in the annihilator of x, but annihilator of x is contained in m, u is not in m and u is in m, this is contained in m that is a contradiction. therefore, m is 0. Okay. So, being 0 is a local property. So, if you want to prove that a module is 0, you can localize it, you only need to prove that it localized at every maximal ideal is 0. Okay. Or if you want to prove that something is non zero, you only have to prove that there exists a maximal idea for which this is non zero. These are the you know tricks that comes up in often in even in research that this is local global principle is something that is being used in the you know active research even nowadays. Another property, another local property is of maps being injective, surjective etcetera. That is a corollary of uh, uh, the exactness uh, property of localization, but let us state that let a be an m uh, a be a ring and 
m comma n a modules then the following are equal f from m to n is injective. In fact, you can just replace this by surjective. What should be the next statement? Yeah, S inverse f from, so I will write this as m p. So, f uh, p to n p this is injective for every prime ideal p prime ideal f m from m. So, this is you know I can replace it by surjective here ok. This to n m is injective or you know, surjective for every m maximal ideal. Again, 1 implies 2 that is property of localization. Right. 1 implies 2 property of localization f is injective f is injective is equivalent to saying that 0 to m to n is exact where m to n the map is f. So, therefore, you localize you still get an exact sequence. So, the first one 1 implies 2 is a direct consequence of exactness of uh, the localization functor. Okay. 2 implies 3 trivially true because every maximal ideal is uh, a prime ideal. Three implies one. <clears throat> so I know that f from m localized at m to n localized at m is injective for every maximal ideal. I want to say that f from m to n is injective. So how do I do that? Again, suppose there exists. Okay, suppose. f of uh, so let us take m in the kernel of f ok. That means f of m is 0 which means f of m by 1 is 0 by 1 in yeah n localized at m. But this is same as saying f of m by 1 is 0 uh, f m of you know in n localized at m, but this is uh, f m is injective this implies m yeah there exists some u in s so a without m such that m u is 0. We want to say that m is 0. I mean look at the proof that we did last time. How did we arrive at that? Does that give you some indication? See, this is true for every maximal ideal. We have taken an arbitrary maximal ideal. Instead of that, 
what we will assume what should be the maximal ideal that we will be taking. See this says that u is contained in the annihilator of m right. Now, if I so this is m is if m is non zero I can always find a maximal ideal containing annihilator of m. Okay. In that case, I will have same as the last line there, u is in a without m and u is in m. So, I add it here, if m is non-zero, then there exists a maximal ideal m containing annihilator of m. This is contained in m now. So, therefore, which is a contradiction. Because u is in complement of m and this part says that u is in m. Therefore, m has to be 0. I will leave the second uh, part that replace injective by surjective and prove that all are equivalent uh, that as an exercise. It is uh, see again proving 1 implies 2 again applying the local localization property 2 implies 3 is always trivial we only have to prove 3 implies 1. There also you choose your uh, maximal ideal appropriately you will get a similar contradiction. Okay. Another nice property that uh, that is being is that it is uh, flatness which is local property flatness is a local property. What do I mean by that? A modulus, an A module is flat if and only if M localized at P is flat for every, uh, is a flat A P module for every prime and M M is flat for flat A M module for every maximum ideal. Let me write it down. let m be an a module then the following are equivalent m is a flat a module m localized at p is a flat a p module for every prime ideal p and m localized at maximal ideal m is a flat a m module for every maximal ideal. Again 2 implies 3 is straightforward. How do you prove the first one? That is again you know property of the localization and one more property that we discussed. So, let us just recall what is meant by a flat A module, a module is flat A module if for an injective map 
f from n to p f tensor 1 from n tensor m to p tensor m this is injective right this is the flatness then m is flat okay so i need to prove that m m is flat a module implies m localized at p is flat a p module this is uh, the let f from a to b be an a uh, bearing homomorphism and m is a, a flat a module then the module m b which is b tensor m this is a flat b module this is something that i uh, i don't know whether i proved in the class but uh, i left it as an exercise in the did, did we not you do not remember ok. So, let me leave this as an exercise now let us look at this situation I have f from a to s inverse a ok m is a flat so again 1 implies 2 m is a flat a module so therefore by this exercise m tensor s inverse a this is is a flat b module b here is s inverse but what is m tensor s inverse a this is same as s inverse m so therefore m tensor s inverse a which is isomorphic to s inverse m is a flat s inverse a module and that is exactly what we wanted to prove. In fact, we are proving even more than 2 for any multiplicative set s inverse a is a flat uh, s inverse m is a flat s inverse a module 2 implies 3 as usual is uh, trivial every prime ide every maximal ideal is prime. So, let us prove 3 implies 1 how do you prove 3 implies 1 I, I know that m m is a flat a m module I want to prove that m is a fl flat a module. So, let us start with the sequence let 0 to uh, may, yeah 0 to n 2 uh, p be exact use localization property to say that 0 to Uh, n p to uh, sorry n m yeah n m to m m 
this is exact sorry yeah. pm is exact and that would imply m is a flat a module that would imply that n m tensor m m to p m tensor m m this is exact. for every maximal ideal, but this is see n m tensor m m this is same as s inverse a tensored with n tensor m this is another property that initially we stated s inverse a tensor n tensor m this is isomorphic to s inverse n tensor s inverse m. Using this property what we have is this is same as localizing. So, this is I mean which is same as saying s inverse of I think I wrote it in this form s inverse of n tensor m is same as s inverse n tensor s inverse m. So, this is uh, n tensor m localized at m this to p tensor m localized at m this is exact. See, this is exact for every maximal ideal m. This is exact for every maximal ideal m. This is injective for every maximal ideal. So, that is the localization property of being a maps being injective or surjective is a local property that is what we proved earlier. So, this implies that 0 to n tensor m to p tensor m is exact is injective that implies m is a flat a module. So, from here to here. Yeah. Uh, so, look at call this m 1, call this m 2, then what does what does this say? 0 to m 1 localized at m to m 2 localized at m is injective for every maximal ideal, but the earlier proposition that we proved 3 implies 1 says that m 1 to m 2 is injective. So, there are few uh, these are some of the important uh, properties that are you know local and this will be used during the course many times that localization a map is injective it is localization is injective map is surjective it is localization is surjective and so on. Okay. Uh, now, let us look at more properties of uh, of uh, s inverse a. So, we the other day uh, we proved that you know ideals of of s inverse a this is set of all s inverse i such that i is an ideal of a and s intersection i is empty right these are the proper ideals of s inverse i this is this we proved right the other day we proved and i asked you to think about what are the prime ideals 
of S inverse A. Okay. So, to start with <coughs> let us uh, suppose I take a prime ideal P if P is a prime ideal of A such that P intersection S is T. This condition has to be there because other uh, without which S inverse P if I localize P that is going to be the whole ring. Yeah. So, P intersection S is empty then can you say that S inverse P is a prime ideal. How do you prove this? One way is of course, you know you can take elements multiply see that one is there other is okay. Another more elegant way what is S inverse of S inverse mod S inverse P? This will be isomorphic to S inverse of A mod P. Okay. Now, A mod P is an integral domain need not necessarily be field. So, this is this is isomorphic to if I this is isomorphic to S bar inverse of A mod P where S bar is the image of S in A mod P. That will again be a multiplicative set. So, I am see here what am I doing? I am inverting elements of S, but now we have already gone modulo A mod P. This as ring itself these two will be isomorphic. This will be a ring and as rings these two will be isomorphic that is what we are proving. or by definition of elements in the quotients I mean multiplication of elements in the quotients in the mod going modulo this will be same as S inverse A mod P. A mod P is a field and uh, sorry A mod P is an integral domain therefore, S inverse A mod P will again be an integral domain. So, this is another way to look at it try to complete this argument that is see I am, I am just trying to look at this as a ring this has a module structure I am see when when I say S inverse A mod P S is not a subset of A mod P exactly we are taking this is S mod P I mean in the sense that we are just taking the corresponding images in A mod P. This, this is a module right I am taking this S inverse A mod P this is an A module we are thinking of this as an A module because we are doing the localization see S is a subset of A. So, this localization is as A module, but here if I take S into A mod P that will again be a multiplicative set and this will become S inverse A mod P um, S bar inverse A mod P. A mod P is an integral domain therefore, this will again be an integral domain that is something to be checked, but that is uh, easy. I will just talk about the converse. So, what we are saying is that if P is a prime ideal then S inverse P is a uh, if A uh, if P is a prime ideal then S inverse P is a prime ideal in S inverse A. 
Now, conversely, if if I start with let p be a prime ideal in in S inverse A, then I have this natural map A to S inverse A, and I take p to be uh, so I call this f f inverse of p, then one can see that p is equal to s inverse of okay then p does not intersect s and p is s inverse so this is so what we have shown here is a one to one correspondence between prime ideals of S inverse A and prime ideals of A not intersecting with S right. For every, every prime ideal P which is not intersecting with S, we showed that we have a prime ideal of S inverse A. Similarly, for every prime ideal of S inverse A, I have a in fact, both of them are unique from here S inverse P is uniquely constructed and from here this P is uniquely constructed and hence the S inverse P is uniquely constructed. So, therefore, this gives a one to one correspondence between prime ideals of S inverse A and prime ideals of A not intersecting with S. I okay. will recall this in the next class. <coughs>